So speaking of, uh, of where things came from, um, we have uh, Lenore here with us uh, up from Sunnyvale today to talk about um, the history of robots that, uh, that Lenore and Wendell's uh, company, Evil Mad Scientist Labs, uh, which some of you might have heard of, um, who made all of the plotters that are sitting on the tables behind you, um, to talk about kind of where that came from and some of the history of, of, of their projects. So um, please welcome Lenore. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Can, can you hear me in the back? Very good. All right. Um, so I'm Lenore, uh, and I'm from Evil Mad Scientist, and I'm going to talk about some of our pro plotter projects. But uh, first, I want to say thank you to plotter people. Thank you, Kyle and Jeremy, for organizing this. It's really great to see plotter Twitter in real life. <laughs> um, we, we hang out on the Twitters, and, uh, um, and what Sherman said was totally correct, that it's a really gracious, um, welcoming environment. Um, and uh, we're happy that you're all out there um, publishing your art. Um, so uh, Evil Mad Scientist uh, is um, me and Wendell. Wendell's out here in the audience. Uh, and we started Evil Mad Scientist as a project blog to keep track of some of the crazy projects and things that we've done. We started it in 2006. Um, we were starting to go to Maker Faire, and we had uh, free time at the time, and we're doing all kinds of crazy projects like this interactive LED dining table. So we documented, you know, how we made it, um, and we had a lot of great responses. We started making kits, um, started a business on the side to sell kits that were in support of many of the projects on the blog. Big kits like the interactive tables, or little kits like LED kits. Uh, and we published a lot of um, projects as well that had nothing to do with electronics or just whatever we were working on, like fractal, snowflake, cupcakes, <laughs> um, uh, bristle bots, uh, little toothbrush robots. You may have seen these. Um, uh, we made cookies. These are vector um, laser cut asteroid cookies. So all kinds of different projects, uh, circuitry snacks. Um, just whatever we were, we thought was interesting and would be fun to write about. Um, and many of those projects involved plotters. So one of our first pro plotter hacking projects was the uh, analog plot bot shown here. We uh, hacked it with uh, an e-ink screen uh, that we um, used. We, we call it e-ink because it has all of the features that we expect. It's flexible, it's daylight readable, it doesn't require power for a display. Um, that's because we harvested it from a magnadoodle uh, and hooked it up to a microcontroller uh, to store images that we could uh, plot with the uh, plot bot. Um, historic plotters or vintage plotters were readily available, pretty ubiquitous in the Bay Area in the early 2000s. We had great surplus stores back then, not so much now. We had weird stuff and uh, HSC, and you could you could get plotters for a song. So these are a couple of the plotters that we picked up for another project um, where we put two of them together to make a 3D printer. Uh, so this was Candy Fab 4000. The printing media was sugar. Uh, but before you go into doing 3D printing, you want to do some 2D printing. So we did what we think is the world's first CNC toast. <laughs> it had a hot air printing head. Um, we called this uh, selective hot air Centering and melting, aka Shazam, um, and we we made sculptures and things fairly low resolution but high print volume. Um, we refined the project, um, learned a lot from taking apart those old plotters. Um, we made one from scratch. This is the Candy Fab 6000, um, two years better, uh, and um, similar um, techniques for movement and things, but all manufactured from scratch. Um, but higher resolution, and it was a, it was a really well-received project. Everybody said it was sweet. <laughs> um, so going to maker fairs and being part of the maker community, uh, we met a lot of interesting people, uh, some of whom are in the audience here today. We met Bruce Shapiro, who created the Eggbot, and collaborated with him to bring it out to a wider audience. So we manufactured the Eggbot, which is a pen plotter that draws on spherical and egg-shaped things. Um, 
after we launched the EggBot, we were contacted by members of the International Egg Art Guild, <laughs> asking when we would release an ostrich version. <laughs> like, okay, there's an International Egg Art Guild. We need to get some ostrich eggs. Um, so we made an ostrich egg bot. Um, it turns out the eggers uh, like to draw on ostrich eggs prior to carving, so they want to mark their design on the egg, and it's very hard to mark something evenly on, um, on an egg-shaped thing. Uh, so that's primarily what they use it for. Um, but once we had this, and having our previous experience with uh, CNC toast, we did the next logical thing, which is <laughs> CNC marshmallow toasting. Let's see if that'll play. So I'm gonna let you watch some marshmallow toasting because it's really fun. Uh, we hooked up a small torch to the egg bot, put some jumbo uh, marshmallows in there, and uh, did what you do, CNC art. You gotta tune your flame first. One of the things that we found with um, manufacturing plotters is that people love to watch them. They're mesmerizing watching the motors move. And that's one of the neat things about making um, robotic kits is that people learn a lot about motion control um, and art simultaneously. Here's my favorite uh, marshmallow plot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, but it turns out not everybody wants to build their own robot. Some people just want the robot to draw. Um, among the, with the eggers, they, they weren't really interested in robot building, they just wanted to, uh, to draw on eggs. Um, so we uh, created a next generation EggBot, the EggBot Pro, that was more intuitive to use um, if the person who was using it was not necessarily the person who had built it. Uh, so this gets used in classrooms, uh, maker spaces, libraries, um, and um, egg artists as well. Uh, we also made some accessories for the EggBot. Um, this is a diamond engraving tool that works on hard surfaces um, like glass. Um, we made a kistka, um, drawing from the tradition of Paisenki, the Ukrainian um, dyed Easter eggs. So you draw on the egg with wax, uh, and then dye it, and then remove the wax. Uh, the egg bot took us places, like the White House. <laughs> this is the uh, White House Easter egg roll. Back then, um, the administration was really interested in bringing uh, tech and STEM uh, to all of the events, no matter what the subject of the event was. So we um, got to bring uh, and demonstrate the egg bot at the White House Easter egg roll, which was amazing. Um, one of the interesting things about making uh, pen plotters is that once people build them or get one, the, the next question is, what do I draw? <laughs> and so one of the things that we've done is uh, created tools for creating art. Um, so this was a, a program called Snowflake. It was a snowflake generator um, that would do six-sided um, symmetry, uh, an output, a PDF polygon. Um, we also made one with um, arbitrary uh, shapes and sizes not restricted to snowflake symmetry. This is called Symmetra Sketch. Um, and we did some demonstration projects, you know, what kinds of things can you do with the output. We did vinyl cutter and laser cutter and embroidery and CNC router. We're uh, not restricted to pens with our plotters. <laughs> um, oh, we, we really like CNC art, so this is another um, CNC project that we did for the blog. This is uh, vintage ASCII art. Um, back from the 70s, uh, this is a TIE fighter. We uh, routed this on a, on a panel. Um, but awesome, it's on display at our shop. Uh, we also created a tool for doing uh, stroke-based text. Uh, one of the problems with um, vector machines is that you need vectors for the pen to follow, and um, traditional fonts are defined as outlines, and people kind of get cranky when their letters draw, it takes so long to draw because you're drawing the full outline of the letter. So we made a um, Hershey text uh, extension for Inkscape that, um, renders vector text. Um, so you can personalize your things more easily. We also um, made a program called StippleGen. Um, another of the questions that we often got is, can it draw a picture? Um, by which most people meant, 
can it draw this photograph from my iPhone? Um, and so this uh, would take a photograph and convert it to a set of stipples um, for uh, drawing. We've got some examples of this in the book in the back if you want to take a look later. Um, so Eggbot and Maker Faire uh, brought us in contact with um, another collaborator uh, who wanted to produce uh, a robot for a, a competition in the art category, specifically painting. Um, so that collaboration resulted in the watercolor bot. Um, which won silver uh, medal at uh, Robo Games in, in the art bot category. Um, and also got to go to the White House at the White House Science Fair. Um, it, uh, we've taken it to Maker Fair and it always elicits uh, joy. Um, watercolors are super familiar. People know what they do. So seeing a robot do it, um, you understand what the robot's doing. And so these often get used in educational settings. Um, uh, schools and places where they may be teaching um, coding, like uh, turtle graphics and things, and it's much more satisfying to have a physical output that you can take home rather than just the code on the computer. Um, it's popular to our shop too. Uh, so the watercolor bot inspired another derivative, the AxiDraw, um, which uh, uh, the creator, uh, Lindsay Wilson, is in the UK, uh, the original creator. He, um, again, was looking for someone to bring it to a wider, wider audience. He wasn't interested in manufacturing. So um, we brought out the AxiDraw V2, which there's an example back here um, that you can see. Uh, and the response to it was overwhelming. Um, people hadn't played with pen plotters since the 60s or 70s. That was old tech. And this resurgence um, that we've talked about earlier this evening was happening. And uh, we couldn't make them fast enough, <laughs> uh, which is an interesting problem to have. So we took that opportunity and that demand um, and were able to do um, some redesign and make the V3, which we have custom alumina extrusions made um, for great rigidity. We get better output um, than the more flexible steel shafts and things. Um, and this has been um, a really solid robot for us. Um, of course, the most commonly question, uh, commonly asked question is, you know, can I have it bigger? So we made a nice long version, um, uh, the big A3 or um, tabloid size version. And um, uh, most recently we've started making the special edition. So this is the one that we brought with us today. Um, it has, instead of the uh, aluminum extrusion for the base, it's uh, milled out of a solid block of aluminum. So we make these at our shop. Um, and uh, they're super heavy, strong, rigid, um, and um, pretty sexy too. Um, as with Eggbot, we make accessories for these. People have all kinds of interesting things that they want to do with them, and so we um, uh, come up with ways to answer that. These are uh, extended feet for the AxiDraw, make it more stable, make it so you can bolt it to a wall, or all kinds of things that people do with them. Uh, we make an extra large pen clip. Um, I didn't know that markers came so large until people said, my markers don't fit. Um, we make an italic adapter, um, which lets you hold uh, italic pens in it and do um, calligraphy. Uh, we make a, a rigid end fixture for it. Um, we've had people who just want to use the AxiDraw as a, an XY stage to do a thing out there. Um, so. They don't necessarily want a pen, they want something else. Uh, some people want to mount their AxiDraw in arbitrary locations. So we have a tripod adapter and the extrusions let us do this, these kinds of flexible mounting things. Um, most recently we came out with some magnetic easel boards for it. Uh, this one is the letter size. Um, uh, with those fancy rulers on it. We've got some of the rulers in the back. If you didn't get one already, come by and grab a ruler. Um, this is the uh, A3 size. Um, we also got to design some fancy magnets uh, to hold the paper down. These are pretty cool. We got to use uh, new technologies that we hadn't played with too much. Um, CNC wire forming is really cool. 
Uh, we also make uh, a rotation stage for the pen holder so that you can put your tool at arbitrary angles. Again, a, a request from a customer. Um, I'm not sure why, but people buy it. <laughs> um, so you can do precision angle um, adapt adapting. Um, so those are some of the things we've been doing with AxiDraw up to now. Some of the things that we're doing toward the future. Um, uh, building on Hershey text, uh, we're making a Hershey Advanced that uh, can add some irregularity to the text, um, make it look less machine-like, add uh, variation in things like baseline and letter spacing, possibly make it look more human. Um, we're working on an AxiDraw merge uh, extension. Um, one of our largest user bases is actually real estate agents. Um, and they want to draw addresses on envelopes, so uh, <laughs> they need to, <laughs> but they still want it to look like it was handwritten, so it needs to be stroke text, so. Um, and we are developing, some of you are already using these, our um, APIs, the command line interface, and our uh, P Python API. These are still in beta, but we'll, we hope to be releasing them relatively soon. Um, and we're continuing to refine the hardware um, as we go, uh, always improving on um, our processes and um, making the machines better and better. Um, so we're located in Sunnyvale, um, as they mentioned earlier. All of you are invited to come visit us, see what we do. Um, we'll show you how we make them. Uh, and I think that's it. Uh, come back and see the AxiDraw uh, SEA3 in the back and play with it and ask us questions. <laughs>